Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, <clears throat> whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from 1 Samuel. <clears throat> now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At the time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not, did not yet know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called to Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. <clears throat> then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told them that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning and he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. 
May God do to you more and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> that portion of the Psalter appointed for today is Psalm 63, verses 1 through 8. Please read responsively by whole verse. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. <clears throat> he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in which there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Speaking in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Years ago, a much older woman passed away in Los Angeles. And she left her entire fortune to a Beverly Hills hotel. With one condition that they could keep her resources as long as the hotel was open, if they would page her once a day. It's an interesting story and a sad story. I think it illustrates how desperately we want to know that our lives matter, that we're remembered, that we make a mark. We're all born into this world with a type of hunger, I mean, yes, we need water and food, we need shelter, we need love, we need warmth, we need to be protected from novel coronavirus. But on a deeper level, when we're trying to do more than just survive, when we're trying to live and live well, we are moved by a more profound hunger. We hunger to make an impact in the world that cannot be nullified, that will be lasting. We long to know that it mattered that we live and that our lives left an erasable imprint on people and in this world. Jesus declares to everybody that you matter. Jesus declares that you are important. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you, that you should go and bear fruit. He says, first, I chose you out of love. And secondly, I chose you so that you could bear fruit, meaning you could make an impact for God in the world. This morning we hear a passage of scripture that invites us, I think, to pursue impactful lives. Look for a moment at this lesson from 1 Samuel chapter 3. This lesson from 1 Samuel chapter 3, I think, is one of the most important stories in all the Old Testament, and therefore one of the most important stories in the Bible. You remember Samuel. Samuel will become this mighty, amazing, impactful, historic prophet. It is Samuel who, as a grown up, will anoint David as the future king of Israel. And yet, in this story, it's the beginning of the story of Samuel. And Samuel is a little boy. His parents have dedicated him to worshiping the Lord and ministering to the Lord under Eli. Eli, at that time, is the prophet of the Israelites. He is, he is the only person whose task is to, to receive a message from God and share it with the people. At this season, before the coming of Christ, 
People heard from God through two things. The scripture, which for them is the Old Testament, and prophets who would receive a word of knowledge or a word from God and share it with his people. And that person at this time in history is Eli. So if you will, Samuel is being discipled by Eli in hopes that one day perhaps he too will become the prophet for God. It says though here in 1 Samuel 3 that the word of the Lord was rare in those days, meaning Eli didn't have much to say. The word of the Lord was rare. Why? Because of the corruption and egregious sin among Israel's spiritual leaders, visions were not widespread. And the first and foremost spiritual leader whose sin was getting in the way is Eli, the prophet of God's people. The contact, the conduit, Eli was literally blind and proverbially blind blind. Eli had lost his way. His sons were especially notorious sinners. His sons, especially notorious sinners, egregious sinners, embarrassing sinners, unspeakable sinners. That's who his sons were. And yet Eli neither denounced them nor disciplined them. He just continued to turn, if he will, a blind eye until he ultimately became, what, physically blind. <clears throat> and as his sight grew dimmer, it says, God's word grew less and less frequent. These two things were congruent. And yet God did not abandon his people. God did not forget who he was or who they were. God had a plan that featured this little boy with a big purpose in life. So the story picks up Samuel is sleeping at night in the temple because he lives there. He lives there with Eli. And the Lord calls his name and says, Samuel, Samuel. And he jumps up, runs to Eli and says, here I am. But Eli says, I didn't call, go back to sleep. So the boy went back and went back to sleep. Short time later, same thing. God calls to him, he jumps up, goes to Eli. Here I am, you called. Eli says, no, go back to bed. It happens the third time, and then Eli figured it out, which is telling. Eli doesn't have ears to hear what God is doing at all. And he finally realizes that it's the Lord that's calling this boy. And so he tells Samuel to go and lie down and wait for the Lord, and Samuel goes back to bed. Do you think he slept? Do you think Eli slept? So he's lying there with his eyes closed, just waiting. And then verse 10 says that the Lord came. The Lord didn't just speak. It says, verse 10, the Lord came. There's a moment. There's an apparition. There's, there's a presence of God in the room. The Lord walks into the room and he calls the boy by name. It is unimpeachable that it is God that is calling Samuel. And Samuel responds faithfully. He says simply, speak God for I am all ears. And God speaks and he speaks a heavy word. He speaks a heavy word to this little boy. Because Eli has failed. And because Eli's failure has led to great harm. The judgment of God is going to fall upon Eli and his family. That's the message. There's no upside. There's no first the pain, then the reward. There's no reward. There's no carrot for Eli at all. It's just a heavy word of judgment that God has to him. Spoken now through whom? Little Samuel. Can you imagine? Ten-year-old having to share that message with his mentor, the prophet, the spiritual leader of Israel. And for the first of a hundred times, hard as it was, Samuel did exactly what God told him to do. And for the people of God, after this, it says, the fog began to lift. The lights began to come on. Like the sun crackling over the horizon at dawn, people started to see again what God's will was, to hear again God's word spoken to them. Eli once had that hunger. 
that hunger to make an impact, but he quit seeking after the Lord. Maybe he thought that if he loved his kids, he couldn't discipline them. Maybe he thought if he was a good father, somehow he couldn't hold his kids accountable. Maybe Eli took for granted that because he'd been called by God, he could do whatever he wanted without consequence. Because in his life among the people, there was no consequence. He didn't lose his job. He didn't get kicked out of the temple. But he chose badly. And the consequences were severe, and he paid a great price. But Samuel, Samuel, this little boy, overcame his fear. And it is Samuel, not Eli, who lived this meaningful life of great consequence. God wants to satisfy your hunger to make an impact. But first you have to seek him. First you have to seek the Lord and his will in all things. Because there was a time when Eli did. That's why he was the prophet. There was a time when Eli walked with God. What a waste. What a tragic waste. And what unmet potential when Christians too are satisfied with a relationship that's limited to salvation. When we say the words and we profess our faith and we believe it to be true, and then we just live our lives in the world. Yes, I'm a Christian, I'm with Jesus, I believe in him. What's next? What's next in life? What's next that I wanna do? Rather than being focused on saying, I'm a Christian, therefore what? I'm gonna follow Christ through life through the rigors of life, through the challenges of life, through the celebrations of life, day in, day out, I'm going to follow after him. What unmet potential? What's the lasting fruit of such a life? What's the lasting fruit for God, for a life that sort of says, I believe, but now, hey, very little. Very little impact for the kingdom. God calls us to live with godly purpose. Some years ago, there's a little boy, about 10 years old. He's standing before a shoe store out on a major street. He's barefoot. He's peering through the window. He's shivering with cold. And this lady walked by. And she said, my, you're you're in such deep thought staring at that window, young man. And he said, I was asking God to give me a pair of shoes. And the lady took him by the hand, and she walked him into the store and asked the clerk for a pair of socks. And then she asked if he could give her a basin of water and a towel, and he quickly brought them to her. And she took the little fellow to the side there in the store and helped him wash his feet, dry them with a towel. By this time, the clerk had returned with the socks, and she placed his socks on the boy's feet, and she bought him a pair of shoes. And she turned and she said, no doubt, little boy, you'll be more comfortable now. And she thought, well, I'll carry on now with my day. The astonished kid took her hand and he looked up in this woman's face with tears in his eyes and he said, are you God's wife? (laughs) Seek God's purpose. Live the life that he calls you to live. Whatever he puts in front of you, whatever he calls you to, just see it and be faithful to it. And watch the Lord powerfully affect the lives of other people through you in ways you can't imagine. Jesus promises a meaningful life, not to those who merely affirm his divinity, but those who follow after him. He is calling right now. Get up and live for him. In the name of Father and Son and Holy Ghost, amen. We believe in one God, the The Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty, maker maker of heaven heaven and earth, of of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God from the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God, begotten and not made, of one one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man for our 
crowd, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He suffered death, death and he was buried. On, on the third day, day he rose again, again. in and accordance, accordance with the scriptures. scriptures. He ascended into heaven, heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Father. He will he come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And, and his kingdom will not have any We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord, and our life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son and his word and the word of life, he has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Kneeling as you are able, let us pray for the church and the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Dale, Paul, Bernice, Drew, Lisa, Cynthia, Christy, Charles, John and Jim, Pat, Rod, and Donnie. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The congregation at this time is invited to add its own uh, prayers and petitions at this time. Father, we continue to pray for an end to the pandemic. We pray, Lord, for our health care workers, for first responders. We pray for public health administrators, Lord, and state health administrators. Father, as we disperse this vaccine in our community, around our country, and around the world, we pray, Lord, that in these difficult times, you'd bring us together as a people. We pray for a peaceful transition of power in Washington, and in state capitals across this country. Father in heaven, you tell us that the prayers of your people waft into your presence like a sweet-smelling incense. Lord, these things that we have asked with our lips and in the silence of our hearts, would you grant for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory, the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Friends, please stand with me now. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you, dear. Peace of Christ. Peace of the Lord. Thank you very much. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Whether you're watching from home or you're here in the nave, welcome to worship at Christ Church. What a time. And today, in the midst of everything else, we will have our first ever virtual parish meeting. It's a real parish meeting, but it's a parish meeting that people will be able to participate in virtually, meaning through Zoom. I don't know if you're a Zoomer. Raise your hand here at home if you've Zoomed already. So that's, you know, I didn't know what Zoom was back in March. Uh, and I'm not a huge fan of virtual anything. <laughs> And yet we do what we have to do. Amen? Amen? So if you're a member of Christ Church, if you're a communicant, you should have received a, a, a message from the church inviting you to that Zoom meeting. If you did not receive that message, then I would invite you right now to go ahead and send an email to Father Matt Bolter, and we'll sort that out as best we can for you in the time that we have. Okay? Um, we expect that this meeting is going to be great. And once again, we're making history. So I invite you to click on and participate to hear about the work of the church, but especially to hear about what's in front of us. This will be the first time we'll have a chance to really talk about 2021 and what our hopes and expectations are as we see the fog, if you will, lift it, and the lights start to get turned on more and more and more over the coming months. And so please join us today for that parish meeting. It starts at 1215. Uh, it's remarkable for the first time ever you can actually participate in a parish meeting from your cabin in the woods if you have a phone and a cell connection. So it's pretty amazing. Secondly, we continue uh, for the time being to keep our midweek activities uh, limited here at Christ Church because of the level of virus in our community. <coughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I was sneezing just before I walked in. So thankfully, sneezing is not a symptom of anything but allergies. But that's the challenge, isn't it? In the midst of this time when there's so many folk that are testing positive, just as a matter of best practices, just out of love for each other, we're limiting our gatherings in the building. That's why we don't have parish meeting. That's why we haven't had youth group. That's why we haven't reopened men's and women's Bible studies. But the lights are going to start coming on again soon enough. And so uh, I invite you all to just be patient and continue to pray with us that we'll get from here to there by the grace of God. Finally, all of us are aware, as American Christians, that we've had a pretty difficult run. And these last few weeks have been especially trying. And I know that there's great concern about what might happen over these next few days with more civil unrest. So I just invite you to please join me in prayers for our country. So we'll pray now in a moment, but prayers for our country that, as we always have, we'll have a peaceful transition from one administration to the next in Washington, and even in state capitals. We'll see the same. Because, you know, you, look, you travel a bit, you see the rest of the world, you think, you know, at the end of the day, as difficult as things can be in our country, we have a pretty good thing going here, by the grace of God. So we're going to pray that by the, by the Lord's mercy, our, our citizenship 101 will be at our best, and we'll be able to get through this time of trial together. In fact, why don't we pray for our country right now? The Lord be with you. Amen. Father, we're so grateful that you've blessed us by your grace to live in this country at this time in history. Father, you know that it has been a difficult year for us and for people all over the world. But for Americans, the political landscape this year has been especially trying. And these last few weeks have been especially painful. We pray, God, that you would shepherd us through this time of trial as a country. 
We pray, Lord, for a peaceful transition of power in Washington and in state houses all across America, Lord. And we pray that whatever leaders are called who have been elected to serve the people, Father, that they would, they would receive their direction from you and you would help us in the midst of this shared trial to get through this together by your grace. We pray against violence. We pray against any other challenge. But we pray instead, Lord, that in hindsight, this would turn out to be one of our finest moments, not one of our worst. We ask your blessing upon our country, and we pray all these things gratefully in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before He died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Samuel and the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Sisters, brothers, and friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and be very grateful.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of your most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, to the Holy Spirit, we honor and glory now and forever. Amen. In the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this beautiful day and forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand, friends. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.